This is a risky procedure. I could lose your nipples with this. I had a post-op appointment with my surgeon and I opened up the hospital gown and he looked at them and said that they were healing well, said that they were looking good. And that's when I was like, okay, if he thinks this looks good, then I'm in trouble. They're clearly, clearly not good. The breast tissue loss that you have from the original operation means the blood supply coming into the nipple is not that robust. This is a risky procedure. I could lose your nipples with this. It's been seven years since I've even talked to a surgeon. You can't keep going on with your leaking and your cyst. It's a real worry. Right now, my left breast just started leaking orange liquid from the nipple from my lump, and I want it out. We had talked about nipple banking, uh, which was his idea, basically trans planting them to my lower abdomen where they would live until I had my implant exchange. He admitted that that was something he had never done before, but he seemed confident, and so I ultimately decided to let him do that as well. But when I followed up with the plastic surgeon a week later, I really don't know if anything could have prepared me for what I saw. The tissue around the incisions was completely black, and he just matter-of-factly said, okay, that tissue's dead, you'll have to have a revision surgery. Again, it took almost six months to get them expanded to a point where they were in good enough condition to go ahead with the implant exchange. That is when he removed my nipples from my lower abdomen and placed them back on my chest. I wasn't expecting to look like I had before. I was expecting them to resemble breasts. <laughs> when I was about 11 or 12, my aunt had actually gone in for a breast augmentation. And she had mentioned to the doctor that I had Poland syndrome, and she asked if he was familiar with it, and he said he was. So my mom brought me in, and he said our best bet was to do an expander, which is a inflatable kind of implant so that we could start manipulating the skin, helping it expand and grow to be able to take an implant later on. And then when I was 18, we did two permanent implants. We had discussed the nipple placement, but he was afraid to move it at that point because he didn't want too many scars on my breasts. So he wanted to leave the nipple where it was and address that in a future surgery. I came out of surgery with nice big boobs and I was ready to show them off and make up for the years that I didn't feel comfortable. But I got to enjoy them for about a year before I got pregnant and they started changing. Now, there's rippling in the left implant. I can feel it all along the bottom is just ripples. And the right breast is all implant up top and saggy tissue on the bottom. About a year ago, I finally got all the way up to 1600 cc's, but I had so many complications. The Gore-Tex sutures were not taking in my body. I developed a breast infection. After a few months, I developed a lot of scarring and my areola literally expanded twice its size. The best way is to take both implants out, downsize them pretty much. I'm trying to remain calm. Hearing what the doctors had to say today is a little disappointing. At this point, I just have to accept my body doesn't like Gore-Tex and I don't like going smaller. So, looks like I'll be stuck with these sugar babies a little bit longer. The day of my surgery, my sister very lovingly took me to my appointment, waited outside for, I guess, 15 minutes. They pushed me out the door. I was throwing up on the way out the door. I was throwing up in the car all the way home. Looking back on it now, it's terrifying. It's absolutely terrifying. When I took off my bandages, my implants were so high, but my breast tissue was hanging down so low. When I called the doctor, he said, don't bother coming in. They're gonna be fine. So I never went back. I feel like my surgeon was greedy. He didn't care about me. He didn't care about my results. He just took my money and left me to fend for myself. My only solution is to use duct tape. It's the only thing that keeps the girls in. When I wake up in the morning, my first thought is usually duct tape. What color am I gonna have? You have silver tape for working out. You wanna go hunting? I've got camo duct tape. You wanna feel kind of girly and sparkly? There's glitter duct tape. This is ridiculous. Can you help me, please? I can remember the first time that I had to ask John to come help me with duct tape. I thought his jaw was gonna hit the floor. He was like, what are you doing?
there's definitely a method to the duct tape. It took me a little while to figure it out, but you have to have a cross boob situation. And yes, that means going over the naps. Bring you one up, come on back. Yeah. I look good. Hey, are you tired of seeing random goofy clips that make you laugh and totally distract you from work, or driving, or whatever? Of course not, no one is. So head over to the Soup's YouTube channel and you'll never run out.